Hey guys, I'm Ken. I co-founded and was CTO of RealBase, a company which we recently sold for $180 million. In that business, we used React as a front end and Rails as our API. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can use Next.js and implement basic CRUD functionality being create, read, update, and delete when using Rails as your API. Okay, let's run through what we're gonna to create today. So in the last video, we set up this view so that you can actually grab data using an index or basically a get endpoint or get users. What we're gonna now add is the ability to delete. So hit that, get gone. We can add a new user. So we're gonna say new user, email at email.com. Save that guy, here's there. We got, so that's create. We can read it right over here. We can update it, right? Saw that change there. And we can delete it, which I showed you already. So we're gonna do create, read, update, delete, all using Next.js and Rails here as our API. And then in the Next.js app, we're going to have all our endpoints here in the user. Set these up, all type beautifully, ready to go. All right, let's jump in. So to get started, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is jump into the link below in the description and grab the repo that we worked on last time. There's also a video that you can have a look at where we work through setting up our Next.js and Rails Mondo repo. So that's gonna walk you through everything you need to know how to do that. Once you've got that, jump back in here and we can show you how to keep moving. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here is actually set up in our app, we've got our back end and our front end, the folders here. So open up the back end, go to app, go to controllers, and in V1, we versioned the API routes just like you would in production. We've got our users controller, right? So at the moment we've got an index route and we scaffolded this all. So it created show, create, update, destroy and everything else for us, which is awesome. So that's really handy. Uh, Rails did that in one command. Now what we'll do is we'll just start up our server. So if we jump in here, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the back end. And what we're gonna run in here is bin dev. Let's see if this works. No, we're gonna run just Rails S. And we're gonna run that on, just run that. Great, that's running on port 3002. You can see it right there, great. Now, if we jump into here and we go localhost port 3002, just make sure this is all working, bang, we got that on. Open a new tab in your terminal. Now, cd one directory back, and we're gonna jump to front end, okay? And then we're gonna run npm run dev, and that should launch next. Sorry, what are we doing? Oh, we're using the wrong node version here, so I'm just gonna run nvm use 18. Okay, now I can run dev. All right, so we're running on localhost 3000. So let's go check that out. This is what we built last time. Great. And there's no data for some reason. There it is. Okay, cool. So you can see this is a super cool little app here, but we can't really do anything. It's just basically using the index route. So what we want to do now is add the ability to create and update a user as well as also deleting them. Okay, so we're gonna implement that. Let's let's just, what we could do quickly is because this is not authenticated, we could probably just open up Postman and have a look at how this works. So, and just double check this functionality is all working. So note that we don't have any authentication authorization here on our main app. So what we're gonna do here, here's our untitled request. Let's go here and just see if we can actually grab this data. So we're gonna go here, users, V1 users. There we go. So we can get that, right? So you can see all the data there. Now, if we try and do a post request to the same endpoint, we should be able to now go here and let's see if we can do JSON and we're gonna say user and we wanna do first, let's just check out schema. I believe it was just name. So if we go into DB schema, we can see we've got name and email, okay? So we're gonna go here, we're gonna say name, it's just gonna be test and we're gonna say email, email at email.com. Let's just see if we can poke the create. Internal error, okay, forbidden attributes. All right, so this is the first thing we need to do here. So we're gonna jump into Rails backend, app v1, users controller. Scroll down to the bottom, you've got this user params. So Rails has this feature called permitted parameters and it's, it just allows you to set what parameters you would want a user to be able to update. Some Sometimes we don't want them to be able to change everything. There could be some things like their role. We don't want them to be able to change that. So we wouldn't include it. So what we do here is we say fetch and then we say permit. I might just, yeah, permit and then open that up. And then what we're gonna say here is we're gonna say name and email, all right? Now, if we run this request here, we hit send. Okay, so we've got there. It looks like it's actually created the user. It's just something wrong with our JSON, right? But if we go here, let's have a look. It's actually crashed. So we've got a 500 in 22 in user create. So we have a look here, render show. So what we need to do here is we actually have to namespace this because we moved our views into a V1 folder. Okay, so you just need to tell it to look there and let's have a 
Look, oh, there's tested email. I didn't even notice it was right. Okay, so if we have a look here, tested email. So let's go tested email like that. And you can see there. So we are creating and we are now returning. Okay, so we have fixed that problem. And there you can see that's the JSON return. So when we create, we're getting back JSON. Okay, and at the moment we're not doing it in next. So we have to refresh the page. But now what I want to do here is I just want to go through and actually test each action so that we know that they all work for now for a put you can use patch as well. But we're going to find now the ID. So if you see here, we got ID of six. It's very small apologies. But if you see there you go change this to user slash six. And now what we want to do is we want to provide the new body. So we're going to go raw JSON. And I'm going to say his name's now Greg. So test that email. This guy here should now change to Greg. So I'm going to just pump this up so you guys can see it a bit better, right? So here, this tested email, we want to make that Greg. So I'm going to move that there. Now, if we hit that, let's see, it's going to have a crash. The same problem, right? So it's saying the user URL. And that's got to do with our namespacing. So when we generated this, we didn't have namespacing. So that's why it's wrong. But you could generate it with the namespace and happy days. So let's see that. That's all fixed now. Okay, so now we have namespaced all of those. So it should be fine. So now if we go and have a look, you got Greg, but that crashed. So let's just try again and just make him Sam for that. Go there, Sam. You can see it's updated Sam and then here, Sam. So far we've got our get, which is an index route. We've got our post, which is create. So it's create. We need read, which is we don't have yet. We've got update for you and we need delete. Let's create the show route first. So the way that show routes work in RESTful naming is you got V1 users slash six, right? So we're just getting that user and there you go. So there's now show, that's read. So we've got create, post, read, get, update, put or patch and then we're gonna have delete. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the delete method and we're gonna hit the same route. Let's just check this is all there and then we're gonna hit delete on that route. And it's as simple as that. So we're gonna hit send, nothing, but Sam's gone. Okay, so you see that now. So now we know and we've tested our Rails endpoints, we can make sure that we can create, read, update and destroy and that all works now. So now what we need to do is add that into next. Before continuing, I obviously want to express that this is just a sample and in production apps, you definitely want to have authentication and authorization wrapping these things. You definitely don't want people to just be able to jump in and delete user six because they felt like it on the day. We want to, and also you don't want to let users see records they don't have permission to see. So you want to be implementing authorization and authentication. All right. So with that in mind, let's keep going. All right. So let's first things first, let's open up our front end. And now what we can go to get source, we're going to go into app and we're going to go to our page. And here's our current page, right? It's nothing special. It's just got the Rails logo and it's listing out list items. So we'd have to now just create a few different pages we need a page to show and we need a page to basically update so realistically in an app like this i would probably just have like if we're building an admin app right now we could probably just have an update and the show as the same thing because when you're looking at it you can update it and see it and then save it can implement a different route and i might do that just to show you but it will be very basic especially because we've only got name and email here and then deleting is probably part of like let's call it a, it's almost like a manage page right so inside of that page when you click on a user you can see the user's name email you can make changes to that using inputs hit save that's your update or you can delete the user from there It'll delete and, and redirect you back to the index. So there's a whole bunch of different ways you could handle this. You could even have delete straight on, on these records here if you wanted to, but that's gonna come down to how you want your app to look and feel. So I think the first place we can start here is the API. So in here currently we have this get users endpoint. So that's our basically our index route. So that's not part of the CRUD per se because CRUD is just reading. So with the CRUD version of let's say, so we're going to go CRUD. So we're going to go create. So it'll be create user. It's going to be an async method. And then from there, we're going to do our, our work. We're going to have an update user, user, which is also async to our work. And then we're going to have a delete user. Okay. Now what I would do here, usually create user, I would have the user object that I want to update. So this would be, you could pass it in just like this user as a user model, right? So it's an API schema dot user and it's a partial, right? So of that, because you don't want to have to pass in the entire thing. We want to maybe just pass in the ID. So you can see ID, name, email. So we pass that in. And usually with these things, you can have like options and stuff, but that getting a bit more advanced. So for now, we're just going to pass in the user and then we're going to return the API request, right? The same thing now with update user. Now, the only thing that here is that the actual ID, see this is saying it's required, is actually optional when you're creating. You don't have an ID, okay? 
When you're deleting a user, we're gonna pass through the user object as well. And, but really all we're concerned with is the uh, ID of that user. It's complaining here because we haven't created these. So we're gonna say create user returns a promise of just a single user. We're gonna have update users also gonna do that. And then delete user will do the same. Okay, and then it's just asking to, oh, also here's the parameters we need to pass in. So we are gonna pass in, I can just copy this through here. And then it's also gonna expect promise void is not assignable. So we haven't actually returned anything here. So that's fine. So for now, what we're gonna do here, let's go into our API method, which is index router users, user endpoints, user. Okay. Now for create user, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return a wait. API and this is going to be hit the user's endpoint and then we've got option now let's just see what we're actually doing inside of our, our option so our options are data method and params so data params and method so we need to go in here and we're going to go data and that's going to be the user object and then we're going to have method is going to be post okay data and then what's params just an object okay so that's create user. Now let's grab that and do the same for update. And now the difference with update is we're going to hit users slash user ID. So we're gonna get user ID from here, pass it through. We're gonna do a put request and then we're gonna use data as the user. And I actually think, let me just have a look here. So data goes straight through. A data object actually has to look like this. So it's gonna be json.stringify and it's gonna be the user. Cause we need to have that nested user. It's not available to objects. So data is an object. I just have to test this one. So it can be either object or string. So yeah, we'll, we'll double check this one. That could just be a type issue. Cause we actually need to remember, we have to send it up looking like this, right? So we need that user object. And the reason we stringify it is just so that Rails can pick it up easier on the other end. Cause it doesn't like the nested nested object there. So we send it as a JSON string, right? So which is what this is doing here. So we want the object with a user object inside of it. Okay, so that's kind of what we're building here, right? It's an object with a user and this is destructured. Or well, it's gonna be, sorry, it's going to, it's a short key for that. So we've got that, that's just crying itself, but that's fine, it's just a type warning. Now here we're gonna do API and this is gonna be a delete and the same thing. So here we can just send, we actually don't need to send data because we're just gonna hit that endpoint with delete. So now we have our endpoints there and let me just do this. It can be an object or a string. I'm just gonna do this so it can shush its mouth because it's annoying me. There we go, so all those types are fixed. So now we have our API endpoints wired in, hopefully working if we get them first try, that's amazing. Now we need to actually go into our app and create the functionality. So I think what I might do is just the delete method from here because we can just do it without creating a new page and just have a little trash button. And then if you confirm it, we delete it. So now inside of our page list view, if we have a look here, we've got this. What I've done here is I've just gone and extended this column from to 96, it's a little bit wider. And then in here, I'm gonna add a new button and this is just gonna be called delete, yeah? So let's add that. There we go, I've got delete button looking beautiful. Now we're gonna add an on-click handler here. So when you click this button, we wanna do something. We're gonna do a new function. And we're just gonna go console.log delete here. All right, so if we go here, I like to just test everything's wired up properly. If I just hit that, so you can see delete happening here. Now what we wanna do is we wanna now create a mutation. So we're gonna use use mutation from Tanstack query or React query. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say delete mutation because we are gonna have multiple, or we can have multiple, just to name it well. We're gonna have use mutation. And then we're gonna have mutation function is going to be our API router dot users dot delete user, right? So the one we set up before. Now we can grab this and we can say now, we wanna go delete mutation dot mutate, which is actually gonna actually perform the mutation. And we're gonna pass in the user we wanna mutate for, okay? So now when we delete, so if we refresh this guy, hit delete on Zimmy Z, it's gonna fire, you can see it here, deleted, everything was happy days, but nothing happened here, right? Didn't refresh. So what we can add here is we can say delete mutation dot, I think it's actually in the options here. So we're gonna just, let's just turn this guy, open these objects here. We're gonna go on, success, we wanna call the use query again. So it's gonna be, let's just see what we can get out of here. We wanna run this query again. So we're gonna grab the refetch 
method out of this. Yeah, we can just call it refetch for now because we don't have anything else, but we're gonna just go refetch, yeah? Now let's have a look what happens here. So if we go here, we've got our data, we hit delete and it's instant. So what's happening in the background now is when we're hitting delete, we're now triggering the user's fetch straight after it. Okay, so it means that we're deleting and then we're fetching the actual results. Now you can manually do this and manipulate the data, but I've found in production and best, and like when you build a bigger app, it gets really messy really fast. So the easiest way is to just fetch the data again and then make sure that if anything else happened on the server, it's gonna be the latest data straight there. Okay, so I like this kind of method. So it's a callback, we run the mutation, on success, we refetch the data and boom, away we go. All right, so now we've got delete. Okay, so now we've, we've hit off one of our four. So let's keep moving. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create the new page for when you actually navigate this user. So from memory, we're gonna go <laughs> users slash user ID, and then we're gonna create a page.t. So let's just grab this guy. Oh, whoops, I created a folder instead of a page. Delete that one. In here, we're gonna create page.tsx. And then close this. And this is called edit user. Okay, we're gonna get some props. And let's just console log our props here. And then also let's return just basically a div saying hello, okay. Now let's go to users slash two slash edit. No, it's not edit, it's just users slash two. There we go. So we've got our route running, okay. So we're running users and then that's a variable, becomes a prop. If we check our props here, in console, we've got params and search params, and there's a param user ID too, right? So it's grabbing that there, whatever we name that. So let's grab that out. So we're gonna go, and it's actually not in props, it's direct, it's called params. So we grab params. Now if we go here and we grab this and say, hello user, there, hello user too, right? So we get this, now we change this to that, and away you go, okay? So that's all good. So now what we wanna do is when we click on this guy, we want to link to that thing. Now you could use, we can import link, so we can say, import link so it's i think it's just actually link from next link and i like to cast this as i uh, actually we can just go here next link because sometimes you have ui libraries that have link as well and you've got a collision so anyways we'll go that and then what we'll do is we'll just link that what do you want oh you also want the href so let's fix that up we've got a class name and then we've got the href is equal to users slash and then here we're going to get the user.id so now if we hover over that you can see users one very small in the bottom left there and users two so if we click on that users one users two all right so let's go and grab we can now grab we'll just grab this guy and reuse him so inside here we're going to go and grab get user Actually, what you want to do here to make this query key a little bit better is pass in the user ID here, caches it correctly. Okay, we've got a query function. I'm just tidying this up a little bit. And this will be get user. Get user does not exist. Let's have a look at why that is. I swear we set that up. Users is user endpoints, user endpoints. Ah, we don't have get user. Okay, cool, you're not wrong. So let's add that in quickly, async. All right, and we get to pass the user partial through here. This. Here, we're gonna get users, and we're gonna go slash, and this will be the user ID, so it'll be user.id. Okay, fix that up, and this will be a get request. We don't need to do that, we don't need any data. Really, we're just doing that, and then we just need to do this, add the type, it's not an array, it's a single entity, and now, that's fixed. All right, so use query. Now, we also need to add, we need to add the options to the query because we're just passing in, we're not actually passing in the user here at all. So maybe if we pass in the user ID here, oh, we have to pass in the user. So we're gonna go We're gonna go ID, user ID. We also need to define that in our router. See here, I haven't put it through here. So maybe what we do with user ID is we just pass through user ID here because we don't have the object yet and we're just gonna pass through a number. So I'm gonna fix this up, put that in there. Okay, all right. So now we're just gonna pass through the ID like that. Now, let's go to Ken. Let's have a look at our console. And we can see here we've got a get request and there's our user, boom, okay. Now, let me go and grab some of the layout here just so that we have it. Okay, 
let's we can get rid of the rails icon because that's not important and then let's just for now let's put in a span and we're gonna or maybe even do an h1 sorry this is where it's gonna get a bit funny because now we we're just, just designing this on the fly right so it's gonna be data dot user what's well, actually gonna be data dot name right, let's just see what that looks like ken grief awesome fetch timmy t timmy t love that all right so we've got our show basically happening here. Now what we can do is we can actually add in the inputs and the forms to now go and update this user. So let's move on to that. Let's go here. We're gonna go add a new div just to box that all in. And then we're gonna have a, another div. We're gonna have a label and this is gonna be name. And then we're gonna have an input here, type text like that. And that's like there. We're gonna make this flex. And flex coal with full. We've got the width there, looking really cool. High fidelity designs here that we're working on. Now we want to justify the center. All right. Okay, so we probably don't. Oh, what's going on here? One error. Yeah, cool, man. So that's fine. And then Let's just go here and have a look at why this is incorrect. It's probably because I've got a width full on it. Yep, don't need that. Let's go width um, 72. There we go. And now, so what we want to do here, we can also grab from here. We can also say lo is loading. So what we're going to do is let's just not show this box when it's loading because otherwise it's going to flash like that, which looks a bit weird. So if we go, okay, so now it's super fast. You can't even tell, but it's not doing that flat. So let's add a little gap to this between these items. Nice. I'm going to pull this to the side just so that it's easier to work on and see it live reload. Okay. So we've got our name and stuff. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to make these flex as well. And we're going to go flex, flex coal. Yep. That's good. I'm going to copy that across to this one. Okay. We've got name and email, right? What we can actually do is probably turn this into a form object there's next has a, uh, the new next 15 or whatever we're up to now i don't even know next js what are we up to guys next latest anyway what are we running we're running next 14 i think you can do the form but what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to use use state because it's, it's so much quicker for this example so we're going to go use state and that's from react right now this is obviously not production i wouldn't recommend this in production it's very loose like use a proper form object or something but for me now i'm just going to say name set name use state and that's just going to be that and we're going to have here email set email because realistically what you want to happen here is when this is finished loading right so when the query here we're going to say on does it have it here so it's uh, on six oh sorry okay so this is gross don't ever copy me please i'm going to get the status here and i'm going to use a use effect use a form library do this properly this is just for this example please 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 and thank you and we're going to depend on the status here of the query and then we're going to say if status so let's just it's so gross. I really, I apologize. Console.log, let's do the status. So we see it goes pending, pending, and then it goes success here. So we're gonna say, if status is equal to success, then we're gonna do something. And then what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna set our state. Now I'm gonna change the state to state and set state, and I'm gonna change this to an object. Like that. And what we're gonna do here, we could probably say default state con default state is equal to name nothing email nothing right okay what we're going to do here is fix this if status is success we're going to go set state to an object of name and it's going to be data dot name and we're also going to have email data dot email. What are you saying? String or undefined. It's just saying here because that, that data, if we 
cast like that, it could be undefined. So we're just going to set it back like that. Um, and then what are you saying here? Status will be pending error cache. Why are you throwing an error though? Um, it's talking data, email and data. Nah, I don't care about that. Okay, now we're fetching our data and then we're setting that data into state so we can use it in a form, right? So now we're going to go value equals state. I mean, let's just structure the state as well. I'm going to go const name email equals state. We're going to say value is name, value is email. There we go. Okay, where you have it, you have that. Now we need to add an on change handler. So we're going to go on change. We're going to get the event and then we're going to cast that to set state. So we're going to go set state and from memory, we can say um, current state, prev state. And we're going to spread in prev state. And we're going to set name to e.target.value. Unexpected main JSX identifier. I've done something funny here. Okay, I've got to return this. All right, so now we can see that we can actually write there, okay? Now let's just go console.log state and just see it change inside of our console. So you can see it there, and then if we change it, now you can see every time I type, it's render it, creating a new render. So that's not ideal. That's why I'm saying use a form library. But for our example here, we just want to be able to store this data and then send it away, okay? All right, so we've got our form that looks amazing. So let's chuck a um, rounded, Excel on that. We wanted a BG gray 500. Chuck some padding on that. Man, look how good that is. It's amazing. 900. Yeah, something like that. Sweet. So we've got that going. All right. So next thing, let's add a button to this form. So we're going to add a button here and we're going to say on click, we want to do going to go console log. We're going to say submit me. Ah, come on, mate. And we're going to say save. Okay, got a little button. We hit here. And what we'll even do is we'll say submit me and we'll log the state out so you can actually see it. What are you crying about? Value prop to form chess. What are you crying about? Value prop to a form chess. Okay, this one doesn't have an on change yet. That's fine. Let's grab him. Chuck that there. And we just need to set this to email. Okay. All right. Yep, that works. Now, if we hit save, so let's say it's his emails.com.au, we hit save. Now, that's actually triggering the form, so we need to prevent default there. So what have I broken here? Ah, oh, yep, here. Okay. There we go. And then we're just gonna go e dot prevent default. So it doesn't submit the actual form. We don't want that. Cool, okay. So you can see now when we hit save, we're grabbing all the state out there. So we can see what we've done and we change it to a .au, hit that, away you go. All right, sick. So now what we can do is let's create our mutation. We are going to now go here. We have used mutation, we sure do. So we're gonna say con um, update mutation is equal to use mutation. And this is a mutation function. And that's gonna be API router.users.update user, okay like usual. Um, let's do this so we can also, and I also want to say on success, we can also pass through, so we've got data, variables, and context. Context.query, we'll get to this a bit later. So let's just leave that for now. Update mutation. So what we're gonna do is when we click this, we're going to go update mutation dot mutate and the same con concept again. We're now passing through. We're going to spread in the user that we have data dot user. 
sorry, data ID, right? So we've got the user ID that we want to update. Then we're going to say we want the email to be email and name to be name, right? Because we've already defined those two variables there. Now we're going to update that mutation. I'm inlining all this stuff. I would generally suggest pulling it into separate functions, but just for, again, brevity, speed, we need to do it like this, okay? So we're going to go .au, pull up our network and see what happens. Let's just change this to XHR request only, hit save. You can see a put request happen, a payload, tell me at email.com.au with the ID. So it hasn't taken that, and I think it's got to do with this object. So it's sent it as form data for some reason. We need to send that as JSON. So let's just have a quick look at that. So all we need to do here to fix this little issue as it's doing form data, is we need to add in this content type application JSON. So I'm gonna force all the content going through here through Axios as this. Realistically, you could probably add a headers object here and then pass through headers, which is probably the most flexible way in case you do start dealing with other types of data. But for now, I'm just forcing this to application JSON. And now if you refresh this page, you can see it's .com.au now if I hit save and have a look at the payload, you can see that our request payload is now user and then it's a proper JSON request and it's updating and now it's .com. And if we have said, let's change it to .new Zealand, you can see here we've got a response and if we refresh the page, it's New Zealand, all right? So just needed to update that there. So now we have update. So we have got read, update, delete. There's only one more to go and that's create our faint for little letter C. Okay, so that's all good. We can now go back. Let's go here, Timmy T, Ken Grief at email.com, Ken Grief at email.com.au. All right, and then we can just go sweet. Right, so you can see there, we had a little bit of stale data. So let's fix that. We can go through and we can actually invalidate. So we've got our update here, so we can say on success. And what we're gonna do is we actually wanna get the query client. Now, let me see if I can get this from here. Uh, invalidate, does this have an invalidate on it? You actually have to grab the query client. What we'll do is we'll just refresh here, simplicity. Um, we don't wanna actually, no. So we can't do that. So this will refresh the get user, which is not actually what we wanna do. We wanna fetch the get users. So we need to get the query client so we can invalidate a query. Let's go and find how to do that. So to use the query client, we can just grab the use query client hook from our query. And we can say query client equals use query client, boom. And then what we can do here is we can say on success, we're gonna go query client dot invalidate queries. And then what we can do here is we can pass through a an array of keys or filled, uh, query keys to invalidate. So with invalidate queries here, you can see in the docs, you can either do invalidate queries, which is every query, which could be a bit heavy in production if you have hundreds that have run, or you can just want do a specific query with the key that starts with to do's. So what we that's what we want to do. We want to invalidate queries with the query key from our front page here, which is get users, right? So we want to invalidate that one. Let's see if that worked for us. So if we jump in here and we go here and we go save and then go back, we got it. Ken at email.com. We actually have to invalidate this one too. So we have to invalidate our single fetch, which is get user. So we want to invalidate get users and get user. Okay, so now we've got kengrief.com. Let's just double check. Email.com. We're going to say email.co.nz. Save. Go back. Now, I don't know if the back invalidates it properly. So we might have to have create a back button here because I don't know if this will do it because it's going to remember the state. Unless I've stuffed this one. I don't know if you can actually provide multiple. Query key to do. So what we could do here instead, actually, just because I don't know if that, I think that builds one query key. It doesn't do plural qu query keys. You might have to do this. But what we can do is just, we could hit refresh fetch on this guy here. Okay. So we're gonna, now we've got .co.nz, change it to .com. Dot com. There we go. Cool. Invalidated and working. All right. So that's all updated, all functioning great. We can delete. Now what we need to do is actually create a new user. So let's do that. All right. So we're going to jump in here. We're going to go into app users. Now I think what we can do is create a new folder called new. And then we're going to go page.tsx. Let's grab this. It's very similar actually. 
Um, I'm gonna call this new user. Don't have props coming in. We're gonna use a default state, so that's fine. Grab that, and then we're basically gonna just return almost the exact identical looking page. So let's return that. We don't have a name. So this is gonna be new user. And like, you could be clever with this actually, as I'm just sitting here thinking, we could actually use the edit user page and then just pass in the ID new. And if it's new, you just do new logic. But just for the sake of simplicity, again, this is not production code. So please do not use it like that. This is something that you could do here. So let's just delete this update mutation and let's just see if we, we are running. So if we go here, new users slash new, what do we have? Go to unexpected something. Where though? On new page? Where have I made that mistake now? Ah, oh, down here. Excellent. See, so, so it's very, you know, you can see it's very similar to what we would do in update, except you could reuse this form logic. I definitely would. Today, I'm just gonna show you how to do this. So we've got this, set all that stuff. Now we wanna have a create mutation. We wanna also have the query client. So I'm gonna grab all this stuff. Let's get rid of the fetch one, because we don't need that. We wanna have a create mutation, and this will be create user. And we wanna invalidate get users, and we also, we don't need to do the other one. So it's just this. We just wanna update that front page so that it has all the newest users. And then this is gonna be simple, where it's basically gonna be create mutation dot mutate. And then here we're gonna pass in name, and this is name and email right don't have an id yet okay now that looks pretty good what we could even do here is realistically is we could redirect as well from here i think like once you save this guy we could push it to the new page so let's see how we can do that in neck okay, just grab the docs so we're going to grab from next we're going to grab the redirect function so we're going to invalidate the query then we're going to redirect to the home page yeah because that's where we got all the the guys let's have a look here Pull up our network. I'm gonna go Tommy, and he's gonna have Tommy at email.com. We're gonna hit save. What are we getting? So we got the preview, but there's an error during hydration, which is whatever. Why did you not redirect? But if we jump back here, you can see that Tommy was created. So we just have to figure out how to make that actually redirect. So what do you have to do? Redirect to login and we've got redirect. I wonder why that didn't work. That seems to be the same page.js. I wonder if it can only be, well, anyway, that's interesting. I don't know why that didn't happen. Let's just go here, console.log. Redirect. Not sure why that didn't happen. Oh, I hate these hydration errors, so seriously. Did not expect HTML to so div in div. Where are you stuffing up, champ? Form. Div form main new user. Main form. I wonder why it's doing that. That's super strange. Okay, anyway, I'm not 100% sure on that. So let's just go here, Zimmy, Z, Zimmy. It says redirect. So for some reason that function is not working. Okay, so I'm gonna try using use router, probably the right way. I think that is from memory now, actually the right way. So we're gonna go router and then we're gonna go router dot push and we're gonna go into here. Okay, let's try that. So we're gonna go test test email.com there we go cool boom done all right so can you see that there it is all done so that is now working we can now delete test there we go where you go probably want to add a little alert to that guy so he doesn't just delete so now we have create but we don't have a button to get there so let's add that let's go to here and we're going to go down the bottom of this guy and we're going to go the button and we're going to say don't actually let's not do a button let's do a next link because it's not a button next link href equals users slash new and that's going to go new user and that's going to be next link fun times new user look at this ui couldn't get better and it's going to be kudo 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 at email.com boom save boom there's old mate kudo excellent so you got the little new user so let's talk through it create can we do that 
Sure can. Can we read him? Sure can. Can we update? Sure can. And delete. Sure can. There we go. That sounds like we have some crud action right there. So quick run through. We've got some new pages. We've got our API set up now in here with get users, get user, create, update, delete. That's all just hitting the Rails API, which we tested with Postman in the beginning. Rails was fortunately already set up with one command, which is one of the beauties of using it. Didn't have to set up all these little endpoints. They're just there, bang, away you go. Just have to fix these up for our name spacing. And that's it. So you now have a beautiful CRUD app that is definitely not production ready, but is very close. I would suggest making changes to this a better form handling so that you can grab the data and it's set so probably something like react form i think is going to be the best way forward something that actually handles that and then when people are typing it's not re-rendering the whole time which is a big performance problem and then obviously we need authentication because we're just sending through at the moment we're just sending if you check it out here in our headers we're just sending the bearer token to where are you access token that's not very secure right there so you want to be able to have some sort of authentication you want to check that on the back end in rail i have done videos on that before so have a look at them sending up the jwt you have that you add some authorization with pundit or action policy so that you can actually say this person is allowed to edit this thing because you don't want random people editing across you know companies or businesses or however you set up your app and yeah, I think that will get you to the end goal. So hopefully you enjoyed that one. This has been requested as a follow-up from the last video that I did. But if you have any other ideas, drop them in the comments, chuck us a like, subscribe, and have a great day. Catch you guys on the next one.